Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday celebration service online. I just want to say thank you for tuning in this morning. Well, today is the first Sunday of the month of February. Uh, and normally, as usual, what we do is we want to pray for the birthday babies for this month of February. All right. So uh, on the onset, before we go into a time of praise and worship, I want to just pray for you if you are celebrating your birthday in this month of February. Maybe what we can do is this. Uh, can you maybe just stand to where you are, you know, whether you're at home or in your room or wherever you may be, if it is possible, maybe just stand to your feet. And if there's people around you, uh, can I just ask that those of you, that those that are around the birthday babies to also just stand along with them and just surround them. And if you can, lay your hand on them. You want to pray a prayer of blessing for them, even as they celebrate their birthdays in this month of February. Can we all do that, church? And maybe even after this, you can uh, also put it down and you know in our chat that it's your birthday. We would really love to wish you. Shall we pray, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we want to thank you this morning that we can come together and celebrate birthdays. Because birthdays, Lord, are times, are milestones in our life that reminds us, dear Father, of your goodness and your mercy and your faithfulness in our lives. Father, this morning for my dear brothers and sisters that are celebrating their birthday, Lord, I pray that God, that your hand will be upon them. I ask for your choices blessing to be upon each one of them. That God, that they will, that every good thing will come from your hand. That God, that you will continue to bless them and that God, that you will continue to be with them, dear God. That you will keep them in good health, I ask, Father. That also, dear God, Lord, that you will watch over their going in and their coming out. Father, I pray that you will give them, Lord God, many more birthdays, Lord God, that they can celebrate together with their loved ones. Father, I thank you and I praise you for your faithfulness. Their faithfulness and your mercies are new every morning. So Lord, this morning, I commit my dear brothers and sisters into your hands. Lord, even as they celebrate their birthdays in this month of February, bless them, dear Father. Be with them and watch over them. Lord, this morning, we also want to remember our service even as we have come together, even as we gather together, Lord, in our homes, Lord God, to come, to praise and just worship you. God, we ask, God, Lord, that you will bless our time, dear God. Lord, that from the beginning, Lord God, of this service right until the end, from the preaching of your word, from the announcements, dear Father, Lord God, even from the praise and worship, that God, that you will minister to each one of us that are tuning in, Lord. Lord, I pray that we will, Lord God, come to a point, dear God, of worship you, to worship you in all your splendor, in all your awe, dear God, because you deserve all the glory, because you deserve all the worship, God, this morning. So, Lord, we pray for the worship team. We pray for, Lord, each and every one of them who are part of this service this morning, the media team, dear Father, and even myself, dear God, that God, that you will just use us, dear Father to be a blessing. Father, we thank you and we just want to praise you this morning. I want to commit this morning's service into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, I ask and I pray. I'm going to pass this time over now to our worship team. I just pray that all of us, wherever we may be, let's just participate. Let's just join in. Because you know what? God deserves all our praise and all our worship. Over to you, worship team. Good morning. Let's just worship the Lord and give Him our highest praise. Amen. Keeper, light in the darkness, 
is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Let's sing. Oh, that is who you are. 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 He's our way maker. He is your miracle worker. He's the light in your darkness. Thank you, God. I want to read to you from Isaiah. Isaiah 43, from verse 19, it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And he says that the wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people and my chosen people and the people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. And this morning, are you thirsty? And this morning, are you hungry? This morning, are you in need of a touch from the Lord? And God said that you are His chosen people. And so I invite you to come, come drink from His stream, the stream that He made for us in the desert. And come, and He has made a way for you. Whatever it is in your life that overwhelms you, God has provided a way for you to come out of it. Now we thank you that you invite us, us this morning to come before you. Come before your throne room, come before you and just drink from your fountain, drink from your rest, drink from your grace, drink from your mercy, and drink from your love. Thank you, Jesus.
from the fountain of life We drink from the fountain of healing We seek your forgiveness, Lord Forgiveness and cleansing, Lord
Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Bow before Him, for He is Lord. of this service speak to our heart touch our heart touch our heart this morning God we thank you for your goodness and blessing in Jesus name we pray Amen Thank you, worship team, for the wonderful time of worship. I'm sure you have been blessed. This morning, if you are here for the first time, I would like to welcome you to our celebration service online. Uh, what I would like you to do is this. On the screen, you will definitely see a QR code. And if you can scan that QR code, uh, we would like to get to know you better. So if you're here for the first time, you're tuning in for the first time, uh, or maybe even you just want to know a little bit more about our faith and a little bit more about our church Just go ahead and scan that QR code and one of our pastors will get in touch with you Can we do that? Thank you. Thank you church. Thank you for doing it. This morning We also want to continue uh, to worship God in our giving and uh, as it is the first Sunday of the month normally what we normally also do is that we bring all our tithes our offering you know our our love gifts our mission faith promise and we worship God with our giving so this morning uh, let's let's give as unto the Lord on the screen you will just see later on uh, two methods of giving one you can do it uh, uh, via online well, direct online transfer or, or you can also use the touch and go e-wallet so you know there are two ways that you can give as to the Lord uh, and so just whichever that you are more comfortable with just so go ahead uh, I want to do is but before we do go ahead and give our offering this morning our, I would like to pray for all of us can we all do that let's pray thank you Lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, this morning, once again, I want to thank you for your presence in our midst. 
Lord, I want to thank you for the offering, for every mission faith promise, dear God, every tithe that is going to be collected this morning. Lord God, I pray, dear God, Lord, that you use every cent, Lord, for the furtherance of your kingdom and to the destruction of the kingdom of the enemy. Lord, I ask, dear God, Lord, that you bless every cheerful giver this morning, every consistent giver, that you are blessed and pressed down, shaken, overflowing, will you return to them, dear God, Lord. I thank you and I just want to praise you for this morning's offering, dear God, Lord. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Go ahead, church. Go ahead and uh, just give as unto the Lord. My, while we do that, I would like to just uh, give you some announcements that we have. Uh, the first one is this, the ladies' ministry, cook a dish and deliver. Now, last, uh, last Saturday, uh, we have already went to Wen Chow and we provided lunch for them, not only lunch for them, uh, but we also gave each and every one of them that, uh, that, that were there uh, a packet, a red packet for the Chinese New Year. And so, just want to thank you uh, for your giving towards this. Uh, this coming Sunday, which is actually today, uh, for dinner, we will be at Disciple House. Okay, we'll be at Disciple House. And so if you would like to still participate in this uh, and be a blessing, please contact those of them who are the names that are listed in the slide uh, that you will see, all right? Just contact the committee and they will tell you how you can go about doing so. That's the first announcement. Now, the second announcement is our prayer meeting. Uh, if you don't already know, our prayer meetings are all online now. Uh, it's on every Tuesday, 8.30, 8.30 p.m. I want to encourage you to come and join us to pray. Now, I, I believe prayer is very important. I, I believe that a Christian uh, and prayer goes hand in hand. You cannot separate it, okay? Uh, and so I want to encourage you to come together, join us corporately to come and pray. There are many needs around us. Uh, one of those things that we are, we, which I think that we are also going to pray for, take time to pray for, is the country of Myanmar. You know what's going on there. Uh, I believe that you know God has raised many people around around the whole uh, whole earth, whole country, even in Malaysia here. Uh, when we want to stand in prayer for Myanmar, and so if you can come and join us uh, for a time of prayer every Tuesday, every Tuesday. The third announcement is this, Bible Month. Bible Month is on in the month of March. We have two streams. Uh, actually, we have another stream for the youth. That means all in all, we have three streams. Uh, the youth one has already, uh, it will be promoted to the youth directly. The two streams that we have here now for the entire church is this, one with Pastor Sunita and the other one with Pastor, Pastor Alex. And I know both of these pastors very well and I know definitely they will be a blessing to you. So can I encourage you, church? to sign up for Bible Month. Uh, please don't wait, okay? Please don't wait. Please sign up. Why? Uh, because we need to get the materials ready for you. And we also need some time to arrange to get the, you know, for the materials to be delivered to you. Whether we are going to use uh, Grab, whether we are going to use one of the ways to deliver to you. Uh, we need all that logistics to be prepared. So if you can, please sign up early. Please sign up early. There's no fees required. All right, so I want to encourage everyone to participate. Uh, in lieu of the Bible Month, there is no uh, live group on Fridays. And so, uh, just want to encourage you once again, church, come and join us for our Bible Month. All right, that's the third announcement. Uh, last but not least, uh, just remember, if you need any announcements, uh, go to our website, gdclang.com, or even our Facebook page, and uh, you will be updated on all the happenings uh, in our church. Amen? Amen? Thank you, church. Thank you, church. You ready to hear God's word this morning? Yes. Uh, oh yeah, before I forget, uh, we have actually launched a prayer shield uh, for the month of February and we want to pray. This prayer shield is for all our pastors and for all our leaders in the church. And so what we want to do is every week we have a different prayer point that we would like to pray over the pastors and the leadership of our church. And so this morning, can I just lead us in a time of prayer uh, as we pray for our pastors uh, and our leaders uh, in, in, in uh, you know, in, and so that we, we want, what we want to pray for them is this, we want to pray for their spiritual life. Three areas that we want to pray for. We want to pray for number one, that they will, be, that they will grow close and have a close relationship with the Lord. That's one. The other second one is that they will have, they will, that our pastors and our leaders will know the will of God 
and you know with not and with all spiritual wisdom and with all spiritual understanding and not only that thirdly they want we also want to pray that they will be strengthened with power through the holy spirit even as they lead the church so these are the three areas you want to pray with pray for can we all just maybe if you can just bow your heads and just close your eyes and you can let's pray in tongues for a while before i lead us in a time of prayer for this thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah Oh, Rabaka Sidi Yanda Ramaka Shidi Yandai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rianda Rashid Robo Sodo Roboru Yandai. Kika Rianda Lama Sanda Lama Shandai. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Father, once again this morning, our Lord, I just want to thank you and praise you for your presence, Lord God, in our midst. You know means lord i want to thank you lord that today we can come and we can pray for the pastors lord our pastors we can pray for our leaders dear god lord and we want to join our hearts and we want to join dear father lord god our faith lord god to pray for them we ask lord god first and foremost dear god lord that god that you will that they will continue to grow close with you dear god lord that they will walk closely with you dear father they will have a good relationship lord god with you dear father that god that they will continue to grow in this area Dear God, Lord, Lord, that Father, I pray, dear God, Lord, Lord, that they will continue to be able, Lord God, to hear from you and be, Lord God, Lord, the Lord God, the leader that Lord that you want them to be. Lord, I ask that you will continue to watch over them, dear God, Lord. Lord, I pray that God that you will give them all knowledge, dear God, Lord, all spiritual knowledge, Lord, that they need to lead the church, Lord God. Lord, I pray that you give them understanding, dear Father. Lord God, I pray that God that you will just, Lord, Lord, give them the wisdom that comes from above, Lord God. Not the wisdom of man, but God, the wisdom that comes from you, dear Father. Lord, we also pray that they will do your will. They will know your will and do your will, Lord God, for the church. So God, that you, we pray, dear God, for our pastors and our leaders, dear God, Lord. Lord, for their spiritual walk, for their spiritual life, dear God. Lord, that they will, they will be strong because we know when they are strong in this area, then, dear Father, they will be able to lead the church, dear God, effectively. So Father, we want to lead them up before you today and Lord we bring them and ask that you will bless them and watch over them be with them strengthen them dear God Lord and Lord and then Lord God lead them Lord God in path of righteousness for your name's sake also Lord we thank you we praise you Father this morning we commit our pastors Lord God and our leaders into your hands in Jesus mighty name we ask and we pray amen amen and amen thank you church thank you Thank you. I pray that you continue to keep the pastors and the leaders in, in prayer. Um, next week, week two, we will have another set of prayer points. So uh, the prayer points, you, if you come for, to our, for our prayer meeting, you'll be able to uh, also see it. You'll be able to pray along with us. And then also your, your life group leaders will also have them. All right. So church, thank you for praying for the pastors and for the leaders of the church. Now this morning, I want to share from the book of Psalms. And I want to talk about how to turn a crisis into confidence. Turning a crisis into confidence. Now, I have three major passages of scripture that I want to refer to this morning. Uh, the first one is from the book of Psalms 46, verse 1 to 11. Psalms 46, verse 1 to 11. The other is 2 Kings 19. Chapter 19, verses 34 and 30 to 36. And the last one is actually Psalms 91. Psalms 91. But uh, before I go into that, uh, before we read the scripture, uh, you know, Chinese New Year is just around the corner, church. Uh, and, and I'm not sure what kind of Chinese New Year celebration it will be this year. Uh, some people are saying, you know, because with all the all that is happening, the uncertainty that is happening out there. You know, they say that the CNY, you know, Chinese New Year is actually now supposed to stand for celebrate next year. <laughs> celebrate next year. Well, anyway, whatever it may be, uh, what I want to say is this. Uh, no matter whatever the restrictions may be or whatever the SOPs, the uncertainty may be, we can still continue to have a meaningful Chinese New Year. Amen, church? We can. We can. All we just need to do is just to have a little bit of uh, ingenuity and a little bit of change of our mindset. Now, what do I mean by this? You know, uh, just, I, if I remember correctly, uh, maybe about a week back, one of our members celebrated his 70th birthday. 70th birthday. Now, uh, he decided from the start 
that uh, nothing is going to stop him in that sense from enjoying and having a meaningful 70th birthday. So with all the SOPs in mind, and now he makes sure that he observes all the SOPs in mind and so on, but yet at the same time, he determined and he purposed in his heart that he will have a meaningful celebration. And indeed he did. From all the pictures that he shared with us, uh, I believe that he had his cake and he also managed to eat his cake. Okay, so he had the best of both situations. And so that's what I just want to say. Even though this Chinese New Year, you know, it may seem as if we are not allowed to celebrate a lot. Uh, you know, there's that kind of so much uncertainty. Uh, but what I want to say, it can still be meaningful. And I just want to encourage you, church, with a little bit of ingenuity and a little bit change of our mindset. I think we can find ways, find ways to celebrate this Chinese New Year, even for the reunion dinner, and make it a meaningful time with our family members. All right, amen, amen. And so that's what I just want to say with, start with. And uh, as I mentioned just now, I want to talk about turning a crisis into confidence. So let's read uh, my first text, which is actually my key text, which is in Psalms 46. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Psalms 46, all right? Psalms 46. Now, Psalms 46 says this. It starts off by making a very powerful statement. He says that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. So the psalmist in Psalms 46 starts off with a very, I would say, very powerful statement. And this statement is that God is our refuge. And not only is our refuge, He is also our strength. And so you need to understand there's a word and and so it means to say that these two belongs together. He's our refuge and our strength. And not only that, he's an ever-present help in time of trouble. Verse two, verse 2 tells us, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the seas, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. So, because God is our strength, and God is our refuge, and God is our ever-present help in time of trouble, then what must we do? We must not be afraid. We will not fear. That's what the psalmist is saying. We will not fear. Even though there are so many things happening around us, even though there's a crisis happening around us, even though there's a pandemic outside happening, all around us, even like you know, he says, the mountains fall apart, fall apart, the waters roll and foam, the mountains quake. He says, We will not fear. Verse 4 says, There's a river whose stream make glad the city of God. And then he, he then he goes on to say, uh, the holy place where the most high dwells. He says, God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The Lord of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Verse 10 says this, and, uh, and, I, and, and please re remember this. He says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So that's Psalms 46. And, the, and after Psalms 46, uh, the, the other one is 2 Kings chapter 19. 2 Kings chapter 19, uh, verses, let me see, 2 Kings 19, verses 34 to 36. If you have your Bibles, 2 Kings chapter 19, chapter 19 verses 34 to 36. It says this, I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David my servant. 
Verse 35 says, That night the angel of the Lord went out and put to death 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. And when the people got up the next morning, there were all dead bodies. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. Title of my sermon this morning, as I mentioned, is Turning a Crisis into Confidence. Shall we pray? Let me pray before we unpack the Word of God this morning. Lord, once again, I ask that you will anoint me and use me. I ask that you will continue to watch over me and be with me, dear God. Lord, even as your word go forth, I pray that your word will go forth with such clarity and such understanding. And that, Father, Lord God, that in due season, even as it takes root, dear God, Lord, that you will grow and that you will bear much, bear much fruit, Lord God, for your name's sake. Lord, I ask this morning that you will help me and that you will anoint me that you will use me, dear God, Lord. Lord, that this morning, dear Father, even as I share your word, God, that you will hide me behind the cross, that it will all be about you and nothing about me. I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, I ask and I pray. Amen. Amen. So, I've read to you Psalms 46 and then 2 Kings 19. Uh, and Psalms 91, I mentioned just now, just keep it in the background, right? Just keep it in the background. We will refer to it later on. Okay, uh, so first things first. I want to give you some background before I unpack Psalms 46. Now, the, the Psalms 46, 47, and 48, these three Psalms are to be uh, read together, okay? If you want to understand the whole story or the whole flow, uh, you need to actually read Psalms 46, 47, and 48 together. Uh, we actually do not know who the scholars of these uh, Psalms are, or Psalms 46 uh, is. But from what we understand from the scholars is this, that the style of writing and some of the words that are being used, uh, it's the, it's, it's, they deduce from that that, uh, that it is Prophet Isaiah. So they, 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 they attribute to Prophet Isaiah because some of the words that was used in Psalms 46 uh, is also found in the book of Isaiah. So uh, Psalms 46 is a book of, uh, is a, sorry, uh, is, is, a, is a passage where it is written in response to what God has done for Israel, for Jerusalem, for His people. It's actually a, time, a, a Psalms of like thanksgiving, a thanksgiving in response to what God has done and what did God do? Well, uh, He actually saved the city of Jerusalem from destruction. Now, as we have read just now in 2 Kings, what happened was in, uh, the, in the year 701 BC, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, uh, who, who they are actually enemies of Jerusalem, came and attacked the city, came and attacked Jerusalem. But against overwhelming odds, they, you know, I mean, looking at this kind of odds, they know that they will lose one. King Hezekiah knew that, you know, that, that the odds was against him. But you see, God came to their rescue. And as King Hezekiah turned to the Lord, you know, God brought about a great victory. And the Bible tells us in 2 Kings, as we just read just now in chapter 19, it says, one night, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers died. Now, we don't know the reason why they died, but all we know was that as a result of what happened, King Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp. And then what did he do? He withdrew and he returned to Nineveh and he stayed there and never to come back again. And so God brought about a great victory. And as a result of that, Psalms 46, 47 and 48 was written as a Psalms of thanksgiving, uh, written as, you know, to, to tell us about what happened and what did God do. Now, the Webster Dictionary actually tells us uh, the word crisis. Uh, whenever time we face such great odds or when we face a crisis, uh, you know, the, it says that crisis is basically a stage in which uh, a sequence of events uh, at which the trend of all future events is determined. Uh, let me repeat it. Uh, it says Webster Dictionary defines the word crisis as this, a stage in a sequence of events at which the trend of all future events is determined. Now, in other words, a crisis is a turning point. 
A crisis is a, is a turning point. Whenever we face a crisis, uh, what I want us to know is this. Whenever we face a crisis, it is a turning point for us. Now, this, this, uh, in this new normal, uh, there's a new word that I learned. Uh, they, they, this new word is the word pivot. It says now a lot of businesses have to learn how to pivot. Well, you know what is pivot, right? I mean, your, your base is the same, but you can pivot here, you can pivot there, you can, you know, but your base is still the same. And so it is with a crisis. A crisis gives us an opportunity, a turning point. Now, most of the time, we think that a crisis means a turning point for the worse. But do you know this morning that with God, a crisis can be a turning point for our good? Do you know that we can turn a crisis into confidence? And that's what I want to share with us from this Psalms 46. There are actually three fundamental principles that we need to consider if we are to thrive during this time of trouble and uncertainty. It gives us the advantage of how to overcome adversary. You see, when trouble comes, if you want to make it through this crisis, if you want to make it when trouble comes, we have to first remember, the first thing to remember that He is still our God, our protector. So that's my first point. He is still our God, our protector. Look at me with verse 1 and verse 1 to verse 3 in your Bible. Verse 1 to verse 3. Just now I mentioned Psalms 46 uh, starts off with a very, very, very important statement, very powerful statement. And that statement is this. He says that God is our refuge. God is our refuge. In other words, he says that God is our safe place. God is our safety zone. You know, He is our shelter. He's a place where we can run to or where we can go to for help, where we can go to to hide, where we can, you know, if there's any danger, we can run to Him. He is our refuge. He is our safe place. Now, I don't know about you, but there have been many storms in my life. Some storms are, you know, are, are bearable in that sense. But there are sometimes there were some storms as if it, were to, it was going to be the end of me already. I, I, you know, sometimes I don't even know, I, I, you know, looking back, I, I can only say that it was God's hand upon my life. It was God who saw me through those storms in my life. But you know what I'm glad for that in these periods of storm, in these periods of crisis, that God is my refuge that I can run to Him, that I can find shelter, that I can find a place that, you know what, a, a relief from the storm. You know, to better understand uh, Psalms 46 and to better understand this word refuge, uh, we must also reflect it with Psalms 91. Psalms 91, the first few verses tells us this. It says, Whoever who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord what? How many of you know this? What's verse 2 says? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You know, this Psalms 91, when I read it together with Psalms 46, you know, it tells me this, that, you know, that God, that I've got a place to run to whenever there is trouble. Whenever there's a crisis that hits, whenever there's a storm and I can't bear it, and I can't take it anymore, I know I can run to Him and there is a safe place. Friends, you know, it's good to know that He is our refuge. It's good to know, you know, that when we are in trouble, who we can count on, who we can run to, who we can turn to. This morning, church, is God our refuge? You know, I remember a time when I was, you know, when I was fishing out in the, in the Pahang River, and this was during the, uh, during the monsoon. 
you know, and when the monsoons hit, uh, you know, it rains, you know, from day, day to day one, you know, sometimes week to week. And I remember we were fishing in this, in this, uh, in Pahang River, in Pahang River, and we were fishing near the town of Pekan. And, you know, we, we launched our boats, it was still drizzling, and we fished throughout the day, and it was so miserable, because it was just raining. And came, you know, to, in one part of the day, you know, I think if I remember, it was almost in the afternoon. And suddenly the sky just turned dark and I knew there was going to be a storm. And you know, but we were just so engrossed in fishing, you know, although we didn't catch much, but you know, we just wanted to make the most of the day and we continued to stay out there. And it began to rain. First, it was just a little droplets, but then it began to be a heavy downpour. So much so, you know, that we couldn't, that we said that, no, we cannot stay anymore in the rain, rain. it's just too cold. It's just too, you know, the rain falling down on you, you know, and it's just too cold and, you know, and you can't do anything, you can't even see, and it's just so miserable and we said, no, let's call it a day. And so we decided to just run out of the rain, instead just get out of the rain. So we started the outboard motor and you know what? We could not make it to the shore because we really couldn't see exactly where we were. But what we saw was we saw a bridge. And that was the Pekan Bridge. If you know where is it, if you've been there before, and what did we do? We headed towards it, and when we reached underneath the bridge, we found a place of refuge from the storm. Ah, I was just so relieved just to get out of the rain. And we, at that time, we could do clean up our boat, you know, take out all the water, scoop out all the water, and cook. Maggie Me. Oh, I can I tell you, friends, Maggie Me has never tasted so nice on a cold day on a boat in a very lonely river. You see, that bridge, when we were under that bridge, it provided us a shelter while the storm still raged outside. It provided us a place of refuge. And so friends, the psalmist tells us in Psalms 46 that He is our refuge. He is a place that we can run to. And you know, Psalms 91 says that He is my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. Because whoever who dwells under the shelter of the Most High, whoever who dwells in the refuge of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So friends, it gives me an idea of this, you know. A mother chicken with, his, with her wings stretched out and all the baby chicken, baby chicks taking shelter underneath the mother, underneath the mother from the storm, from whatever danger may be around. He is our refuge. Because I know he, can, he is our refuge, friends. The Bible also tells us that He is a place that we can run to. He is our, our protector. Remember I said just now, he, in verse 1, He is not only our refuge, but He is also, what? He is our refuge and strength. Now the word and is a conjunction. It means that it connects the two words together. The refuge and strength. Refuge and strength. And so friends, not only does God provide a place for shelter for us, but you know what? He strengthens us. You know, when we come and we hide under His wings, we come and we take shelter under Him, what does He do? Not only does He protect us, not only does He shield us, Friends, He strengthens us. He strengthens us. Why? Because He knows there's, going, there's the storms that are still, the storms are still raging out there. He strengthens us so that we can stand. He strengthens us so that we can withstand the storm. He strengthens us so that we are ready. You know, when the storm comes again, we are able to stand. Friends, this morning, God not only protects us, but not only does He offering us, offering us a place to hide, but He also helps us by strengthening us for what is to come. You see, by infusing us with His strength, we are able to stand in the midst of the trouble. Psalms 46 tells us He is our refuge and our strength. Not only that, He says, an ever-present help in time of trouble. You see, He's the God of now, today, sekarang, now. Not only is He your God in the, of the past or even the future, but He's also the God of the now. Here, ever present. 
So His help is present not only in the past, not only for the future, but now. His strength is not uh, not only available in the past or or in the future, but now. So friends, I want to say this to us, all of us here. If you want to turn your crisis into a confidence, you need to know that God, He is still God, our protector. Not only does He provide a place of refuge for us, but He provides strength for us. He strengthens us. He's, he, you know, he, he equips us. He strengthens us for the task that is to come. And friends, He is available. His strength, His refuge is available now. Now, when we need it. Maybe I, I say this another way. Though the you know though our friends may be few, and our enemies are many, though I can't seem to make it till the end of the month, because no more money. <laughs> though my wife may not be speaking to me, though our marriage may not be going well, though my children may seem to be rebellious and disobedient, though I may have problems in my job, though I may not be able to cope. You know, with all the things that are, that, are, that are coming my way, with my studies, though I may, it seems as if the enemy has all his focus on me and all his efforts on me. I want to say this to us, friends. We have a refuge and a strength. Now, it's available for us. You see, God is still our protector. We need to understand that. Not only is He our protector, but when the crisis comes, we need to also remember that He is still God, our provider. That's my second point. So my first point is this, He is still God, our protector. Second point is He is still God, our provider. Let's look at verse 4 to 7. Verse 4 to 7. Verse 4 to 7 tells us this. Paul to says, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Remember, I told you this Psalms 46, 47, 48 is made in reference to what happened. So the city of God that they were talking about is Jerusalem. So it says, there's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Now God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Verse 4 starts off with this. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now, in ancient times, friends, rivers were very valuable resources. I mean, water, we all know that, right? Water, you need, you need water to survive. I mean, you got no food, not too bad. You can still survive, you know, a few days, but no water. It's, it's, so a city like Jerusalem needed water to survive. But unfortunately, there were no rivers near Jerusalem. There were no sources of water in that sense from rivers. But what Jerusalem had was this. There was a spring. They call it a spring of Gihon, which actually fed into a small stream that that actually flows right into Jerusalem. And from this small stream, the the whole city of Jerusalem was able to be sustained by the water, was able to be sustained. And and here, what happened was, as you know the story, King Shanicharab came and he besieged Jerusalem. Now, one of the ways that when we talk about besieging a city, is basically they cut off everything. They cut off your supply, your food and your water. But you see, King Hezekiah, I believe he had wisdom from the Lord. He knew that when King Shanicharab, if he comes and he does all these things, the water would be cut off. And so what did King Hezekiah do? He, what he did was he went way, way before everything happened, way before King Shanicharab Come, came, he knew that he was coming even before they arrived. He went to this place, he went to the spring of Gihon, and what did he do? He blocked it. And not only did he block it, he channeled it, channeled the waters now instead of on top, 
he channeled it down to an underground tunnels underground tunnels and these tunnels ran all the way right into the city of Jerusalem and so what happened during the siege Jerusalem still had a water they still had a stream coming in supply of water coming in you see the Lord provided for them gave Hezekiah that kind of wisdom so friends I want to say this he is still God our provider you see in times of crisis when there was a siege God provided a stream flowing underneath right straight into the city provided a stream that was on the inside not on top of the on, on top of the where, on the surface where you could see where they could stop it but flowing underground flowing underground into the city he provided a river in times of crisis for all of us and just like the just, and, and, and friends God you see the Bible tells us many times that God has provided us with living water isn't it with living water <laughs> you know and so you need to know you need to know friends that we have this source this river flowing in us and in times of crisis we need to tap into this river if we are to turn our crisis into a confidence and this river that is flowing inside of us friends is the holy spirit <laughs> he has given us the holy spirit and if you were tap into the holy spirit you were to tap into this river and friends i want you to know you will have boundless supply you will have endless strength you will have endless wisdom you will have endless anointing to face the crisis and turn it around into a confidence you know paul said in philippians 4 verse 19 he says my god will supply all your needs according to his riches in christ jesus so many times we we think that our needs are being supplied from the outside so many times we think that our needs are supplied you know by our money by our prestige by our titles uh, yeah maybe to a certain extent that does there is a source that come or you know of, of uh, providence from there but when all these things run dry when all the bank accounts run dry when everything else run dry you need to know there is a source that never runs dry and there's a river that god has provided inside us river streams of living water flowing inside of us and we learn how to tap on it friends we will be able to see this crisis and turn this crisis around into confidence you now i remember a song we used to sing in church i i, I it goes something like this that's a river of joy flowing out from me makes the lame to walk and the blind to see open prison doors set the captives free that's a river of joy flowing out from me friends do you have this river are you more importantly, are you tapping into this river or not? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you spending time reading God's word? You see, if you want to turn this crisis into a confidence, you need to tap into this river, into this source, because God is still our provider. He's still God, our provider. You know that, that, that I, I know God has been good to all of us. I know. I've heard of so many stories, so many testimonies of how even in this pandemic, God has been so good to all of us and He has provided for our needs. Even sometimes, even way before, like I said, uh, even way before that we ever knew that we were going to have a need. <laughs> you know, God has already prepared it for us. But have we learned to tap into the resources that God has for us, tap into this river, this Holy Spirit, if not friends this morning why don't we just do that last but not least not only is he still god our pro protector and not only is he still god our provider but he is still god our proven one he is still god our proven one 
And what I want to say is this, God is not a noob. He's not a newbie. He's not new at being God. <laughs> Sorry if there's such a thing. He's a proven God. He's a proven time after time we see in His Word and in my life, He has proven to me that He is faithful, that He will never leave me nor forsake me, that He is a good God. He is a proven God. He is a proven one. And if we look at verse 8 to 11, verses 8 to 11, we can see that He is the proven one when we learn how to reflect on His power and when we learn how to rest on His power. You see, how do I know that He is the proven one? Well, when I learn how to reflect on His power, I reflect on what He has done for me. You know, verses 8 to 9, it says, Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolation in the earth. He makes war to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bows and cuts the spears in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Come, behold what the Lord has done in our life. Reflect on His power. You know, He's a powerful God, you know. He's a powerful God. He can, he can do so many things. I mean, He can... I mean, just by His words alone, He made creation. <laughs> if there's such a thing, He made creation. I mean, creation came into being. Just by His words alone. He is a powerful God and we learn to reflect on His power and we learn to see how big our God is. Then our problems, our crises are not big. You see, friends, when David faced Goliath, he did not reflect on his own power or his own capability, but the shepherd boy David reflected on the Lord God of Israel whom he served. He reflected on his power and even though Goliath was nine feet tall, he, the Bible tells us he was a soldier since child. That means since young, he was in training to be a soldier. Even with all these things, when David did not look at the power, did not look at what Goliath represented, but he looked at the power of the God that he served. He reflected on how powerful God is and how what God can do. Even with these five little stones that he picked up and he brought the giant down. Friends, God is, he is still God, the proven one. When we learn how to reflect, on his power this morning are you reflecting on his power or are you reflecting on the power of the crisis i hope that we are all reflecting on his power because he is a powerful god he is still god the proven one not only reflecting on his power we need to learn how to rest on his power you know verse 10 and to 11 says this be still and know that i am god I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with, is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Psalms, Psalms, after everything that has been said and done, he says this, Hey, you need to be still. Now, just as you have reflected on his power, now learn to rest in his power. Be still and know that I am Lord. You see, sometimes we just need to be still in, the, in that crisis. Sometimes the storm may be raging all around us and you know what? We are trying our best, you know, like the, the disciples in the boat, trying our best to ensure our boat does not sink. But we forget that Jesus is sleeping in our boat. We forget that Jesus is in our bone. <laughs> and all we just have to do is go to Him. Rest. Learn how to rest in His power. Learn to be still and know. You know, sometimes there comes a time in our life when we, everything that we do, you know what, after that we have done everything, there's nothing else we can do, you know, there's really nothing else we can do already. Then we need to make sure that we learn how to be still. We learn, need to learn how to rest. You know, in, throughout the Bibles, we have seen how God tells His people. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, I can hear Him telling Jehoshaphat, He says, there's no need for you to fight, be still. 
Be still, stand still, be still, and see the salvation of the Lord. In, in Exodus 14, verse 13, I can hear God telling Moses what, you know, says, don't be afraid, just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the enemy that you see now, you will never see him again. Why don't you tell somebody, if there's somebody next to you, tell that person, hey, I think we need to be still. Be still. Sometimes in the midst of the crisis, we just learn to need to be still and let God take over. I use the term, I say, let God be God. Sometimes in the crisis, we think that we can do everything, you know, we can do things our way. Now, I'm not saying that we don't, we, we sit around and do nothing, but I need to tell us, all of us, that as we work, as we do what is needed, we need to be reminded there are times that we need to let God do the impossible. We do whatever that is possible and we let God do the impossible. So if you want to let this cri- turn this crisis into a confidence, you need to rest, rest in His power. Rest in His power. Not only reflect on His power, know that He is God, but rest on His power that He has got your back that He has got your back. No matter what comes your way, He has got your back. And as I come to a close, you know you will notice that the psalmist ends with this word called Selah. It's not Salah, Selah. Now Selah means this, it's actually a technical musical term that denotes a reflective pause. So what it means is this, when you see all these things, after you have read all these things in Psalms 46, right? You come to a place that you stop and then you reflect on what you have just read. You reflect, you meditate on it. You pause for a while. And you see friends, when we do that, what happens is this. When we learn how to selah, when we learn how to reflect and we pause, what happens is this. Out of all that we have read, we learn to praise God. We can't help but to praise God. Because friends, you look at what He has done. You know, when if you were, if you were reading this Psalms 46, like how the Jerusalem, of if you were there in Jerusalem when King Sennacherib came, Friends, you would understand the emotions, the fears. And then when God came through for the people and how God turned it around for them, turned their crisis around for them, friends, the people can't help but to praise Him. The only response that we can give to God is to praise Him. Selah. So friends, this morning, He is still our God, our protector. He is our refuge. He is our strength. Not only for tomorrow, not only in the past, but He is our ever-present help in time of need. He is the God of now. Not only is He still God, our protector, He is also still God, our provider. He has provided for us a resource, a stream, a river inside us. A river of joy, the Holy Spirit. And friends, we need to learn how to tap into this. And as we tap into this, you, you will find that whatever the crisis may throw at us, we will have that joy. We will be able to turn it around. Not only is He our protector, not only is He our provider, but He is also God the proven one. As we reflect on His power, as we rest on His power, you know that God is the proven one. If you look back at all the things that you have gone through, all the things in your life, you will see that God has been with you. You will see that God has provided for you. He has protected you. 
and you would see that He is a faithful God. And if He can do that for you in the past, He can do that for you now. And as we learn how to selah, how to pause and reflect, all we can come to, the conclusion we can come to is just to praise Him because He is a good God. Because He is a faithful God. Because He is a wonderful God. Amen, church. Amen. This morning, we are also taking our Holy Communion. I just want to give you a moment just to go and get your emblems prepared. Uh, and then we will come together and we would like to take the Holy Communion to that, together. Can we do that, church? So very quickly, uh, please go and get your emblems and come back. You have your emblems? Can you help me by just uh, passing it out to your family members that are near you? They are with you now at this point of time. Hold it in your hands. Hold it in your hands. In a short while, we are going to pray. All right? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I also encourage you, church? that at this point, that uh, even as you hold the emblems in your hand, that you will take uh, this short moment to just to reflect on not only what has been said this morning, but also just to search our hearts. Maybe that we come before the Lord at this point of time, you know, there's something that God would like to will like us to get right with Him. Can we just do that? Can we just do that, church? And so if you just... At this moment, just begin to just speak to the Lord and just search our hearts and let's come before the Lord's table with a right attitude. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Rabba Kassanda Rama Shidi Andarama Sandai. Ki Barama Kassanda Rashandai. Father, this morning I want to thank you for your presence in our midst. Lord, I want to thank you that you are a good God and you are a faithful God. That God, that you are our protector. That God, that you, dear Father, Lord God, Lord, are not only our protector, dear Father, you are our provider and you are the proven one. Father, this morning, I thank you for all, Lord God, your Son has done on the cross. Lord, I thank you for the blood that was shed, dear Father, for the, for the body that was broken, dear God, Lord. Lord, I thank you, dear God, Lord, Lord, that Jesus went to the cross and that, Lord, that your Son, even as He endured, dear God, Lord, Lord God, a death on the cross, God, He paid the price for us. That all of us today, as we confess Him as our Lord and Saviour, Lord, that we can be called now the sons and daughters of God. We can be called a child of God. Father, thank You for what Jesus has done on the cross for each one of us. So, Father, I want to thank You and praise You Lord, Lord God, for everything. Lord, I thank you, dear God, Lord. Lord, Lord, that you are a good God. And that God, that it is by Jesus' blood. Lord, and Lord, that there is forgiveness of our sins, dear God, Lord. Once again, dear Father, you remind us, dear God, that Lord, that we ought to come before you and Lord God, to partake of this communion, Lord, in remembrance of you. So Father, this morning, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and we pray. Brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake of the bread together, church? In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we partake of the cup together?
Let me just pray for you before we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and give you rest. May the Lord your God watch over your going in and your coming out. May He bless the work of your hands and cause you to prosper even as your soul prospers this morning. Father Lord, I ask that for a special protection upon all my dear brothers and sisters, that God, that no evil will come near them, nor their dwelling place. Lord, I ask, dear God, Lord, that you will strengthen each one of them, that you will also help them to know that you are their protector, that God, that you are their provider, and God, that you are the proven one. That God, that even in this midst of crisis, in this midst of pandemic, we can turn it around into confidence. Our confidence and our trust is in you. So Father, this morning, as the servant of the Most High God, I bless the people of God. May they go in the power and anointing and of your Holy Spirit. I ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen and Amen. God bless you, church. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Have a wonderful day. And I just want to wish you a blessed Chinese New Year. I pray that you will have a wonderful time with your family members. Uh, stay safe. Please continue to practice the SOPs. And uh, may the Lord continue to bless you and watch over you. God bless you, church. If you need all the information that you hear today, do log on to www.gtclang.com updates. Your one stop for all your church needs. Also, if you are on Instagram or Facebook, do follow us at our handle at GTClang. That's all the time we have today. God bless.